In the words of Paul, I pray that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. Amen. Well, there's lots of things that come with hope. Uh, uh, sometimes, and as we approach the end of the year, I've been thinking, or what struck me is overwhelmingly is the sense of judgment that comes when one completes a year or evaluation or review. Uh, this week, we've been praying for a young woman, Carolina, who had uh, uh, crossed the border as an unaccompanied minor last summer and found her way up here to join her mother in Hyattsville and us through our community of Santa Maria where they participate. Uh, when she crossed the border, we really didn't know exactly how this all was going to work. The only thing we knew was that there would come a day of judgment when she would have to present herself to the court. And the court would determine some outcome, whether she could stay or whether she would be deported. And so her day was on Thursday. And she presented herself. And, and fortunately, she did. She produced all the paperwork that was required. That's important, you know, producing the paperwork. And she showed up. Another important thing in life and in work, that we show up. And when she got there and sat through what she had to sat through, she was told to come back in June. And that's the way it seems to go in some processes. And it was the good news because the consequences, if she had, if they had gone against her, she could have been uh, forced to abandon her family here and, and go back to El Salvador. And so it was that the judgment was suspended. Uh, ends and endings of year is a time where a lot of people are encouraged to judge or pass or evaluate and look at their own lives. I was looking at uh, psychology today uh, where there was uh, an article that was suggesting that we should all take time and we should all review uh, uh, what's working and what still needs work. Can I live with the decisions I've made? What have I learned from my successes and my failures? Now that I know where I'm at, how will I get where I want to go? Good year ending questions. And even though this may be ahead of your New Year's resolution time, these are the questions that, that are worth pondering. Another set of questions, what have been the key accomplishments how have my relationships developed? Uh, what have I learned? Have I learned anything? What mistakes have I made? How have I managed my time? Have I showed up? Have I been there? Have I been there? And of course, that may start with self-evaluation, but there's always the dreaded performance review that people undergo at work, or maybe the end of the marking period at school, or something where somebody's going to look at you, and it may be that they're just going to ask those basic questions. Well, uh, did they show up? Were they there when they were expected? Maybe they were sick too much. Maybe they got hurt. Maybe they got injured. But did they, they, they show up? Uh, kind of, and remember two weeks ago, the story out of the gospel lesson about the five women who were supposed to be greeting the bridegroom coming, and when they showed up late, when they were tardy, they were turned away at the door. They were rejected and fired because they didn't show up. Or it, or it may be the questions that come along those, uh, um, the, the measurable things, the evaluative things. Were they productive? Did they produce enough? What did they do? And so last week we had that parable of the, of the, uh, the uh, store to receive the one talent and buried it and then got kicked out when the master came back because he didn't produce enough or sufficient. He didn't lose, he just didn't produce. And it wasn't enough. But the most dreadful part may be the judgment part. Those things where people look at those criteria or the characteristics that you embody. And it may be that you have somebody up above you that's looking and evaluating you and passing judgment on you. Sometimes that would be nice and tidy compared to those things where you get in these 360 degree evaluations where peers and everybody gets an opportunity to comment on you. And it can be overwhelming at times. And for all the effort, still Forbes magazine will come along and say, and it doesn't really count for anything. Why do you do that? 
And yet, in what, some shape or form, is there anybody here who won't go through some kind of year-end retrospective review of what have I done with my life this year, what has been happening, and wondered what are the questions that I should be asking? Ezekiel comes in and evaluates uh, in today's reading that Chris read, comes in to evaluate the shepherds, the, the emblematic figure for the kings, the rulers, the leaders, the presidents, the managers, the CEOs of the flock. And uh, he poses some questions to them, the evaluative questions. Have you consumed the fat? Have you skimmed off all the good stuff before anybody else could get any? Have you clothed yourself well, the fine clothes? Have you slaughtered the fatlings, you know, the, the really rich marbled beef that comes out of the feedlot and left all of the straggly, scrawny stuff for everybody else? Have you fed the sheep in your care, the people under your supervision? Or maybe have you strengthened the weak? Have you healed the sick? Have you bound up the injured? Have you brought back the strayed? Have you sought out the lost? Have you managed and ruled with force and harshness? Well, because if you have, you've scattered your people, your sheep, because you've not been a good shepherd, and they became food for all the wild things, says Ezekiel. And so it goes that uh, as Ezekiel comes in, he, he's really building on a tradition that comes in the ancient world from Habarabi, the, the code that when you are a leader, when you're responsible, your, your job is to promote the welfare of the people, to cause justice to prevail in the land, to destroy the wicked and the evil, that the strong might not oppress the weak. A commentator notes that what the shepherd metaphor emphasizes then is the ruler's responsibility to establish justice so that the people may flourish. And thus says the Lord, according to Ezekiel, I am against the shepherds. I will demand my sheep at their hand and put a stop to their feeding the sheep. They just aren't measuring up. That's nice. How many of you are shepherds or bosses? How many of you feel like that? You're vulnerable to that kind of critique. And then Jesus comes and actually uh, he has his evaluation to apply as well. Have you fed the hungry, he says. And this is not just, it comes, it, it says, as we read it, Jesus, the king came to the nations, the ethne, and it gets translated as the nations, but also as the peoples. Or in some commentators' view, it's talking about the people of this community, the church community, the people who are the followers of Jesus. And Jesus, the king, came to all these people, and he says to them, he separates them into sheep and goats, and says to them, uh, you on this side, you did good. You did well. And so you're going to enter the kingdom of God, but you're the blessed of God. Well, because when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, when I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was an alien, when I was a stranger, when I was one of those people, you welcomed me. When I was... Uh, sick. You took care of me. When I was in prison, you visited me. And they said, and they're the evaluative questions. They said, well, we didn't know we were doing that. When did we do that? When you did it to one of these, one of these, one of our brothers or sisters here. And then it says he turns to the other side to the left and says, well, you're the cursed ones because you didn't feed or give to drink or care for or accompany or you didn't do these things. And when you didn't do it to the least, to one, just one of the least of these, you didn't do it to me. It's a devastating comment as I think about it at least when I didn't do it to one, to one, to one of the least of these. I fell short. Now, I don't know about you, but I can count, I can't count how many ones I've missed or walked by or didn't pick up or didn't accompany. Is anybody here that passes this test? And it is, in biblical terms, it seems to come across as a pass-fail test. You either did or you didn't. And if you didn't, you're out. Is that what it's saying? 
That's a scary notion that, that if I missed one, I don't even get a 1% margin of error. Where is the grace in Matthew? Well, maybe Matthew isn't so full of grace, but it pushes us back to what, to what Ezekiel has to say. It pushes us back to his words because he reports that this is what God then does when he looks out and says, you people don't pass muster. God says, I myself will search for my sheep and I will seek them out. I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them. I will come to you. I will rescue you. I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strayed and I will bind up the injured and I will strengthen the weak. Jesus is coming for you. God is coming for you. He says, I will be your shepherd when your shepherds let you down and drop you cold. I am yours. And then he says, I will send another. He says, I will set up over them one shepherd. I will send another. He talks about King David, but King David is long dead by this point. He's talking to people who are in exile in Babylon, the, the dispersed, the diaspora people, the people that are living there from all other places who are under duress. And he's saying, I will send you someone. Historians will point to Cyrus, a Persian, somebody who's not even in the script. But I will send you one, and that one will be your shepherd and will guide you out. But you need to stop and look and watch and listen. The irony of a day when we celebrate Christ the King Sunday, the, the seeming elevation of Christ to the throne, the, the, the consecration, the, the anointing of a king. Instead of having a celebration, we confront ourselves and are forced to look forward, look for another, to look forward to a day. And so it is that we don't stop at the end of the year. We come into an advent, some sense that God is coming to us, and we begin the process again of watching and looking and waiting and hoping and hoping that God will come to us. So it is that with Paul I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. Let the people of God say, Amen.